Dolan Sports Talk, worldwide, with some news from the world of boxing. So y'all know what time it is. You ain't in a rush to get concussed. Now, let's just talk about boxing pound for pound. We got the, you know, the the uh, Boxing Writers of America's pound for pound list. We're talking about Ring's pound for pound list. And this is an example of why I tell people that after you think that you've left the casual status, status of boxing, right? You know, where you think, okay, I just pay, pay attention a little bit. Once you feel like you've left that realm and you've gotten into knowing boxing a little bit, then you will be irked by these pound for pound lists. And at that point, you should probably make your own because I've told you about pound for pound list is something fishy about them. They always have little agendas and things are just, you, you will have something. You would know, once you start knowing more, you would like the pound for pound list, these ring magazines, and even the Boxing Writers of America. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Association of America. These guys, you know, the name. These the Writers of America. So you would expect writers to know all the intangibles. No, you like, well, I like to say the negotiations between fighters, fighters who don't want to fight other fighters, fighters that are kind of avoiding people in their division. All of those things add into that. You know, we can't just say, hey, this guy is better than the guy that he doesn't want to fight. I'm repeating myself to some of you, but it just shows you how these things are in the boxing um, in the boxing world. And, you know, uh, these pound for pound lists are suspect and sanctioning bodies which we're not going to talk about in this video, but sanctioned bodies are very suspect. The things that they are up to, you know, there's no one governing them. So they, they just do little outlandish things. And then, you know, we complain about it two or three days and we sweep it under the rug. Very, very uh, skeptical of these, these, these guys and these sanctioned bodies. And like I said, we got four ma major ones and we got come, uh, other ones coming through the back door. The WBA regular title, that would be five. The IBO slipping through the back door. Now I'm hearing people even mentioned the IBA, right? So we got the International Boxing Association and the International Boxing uh, Organization coming in. That would give us seven champions in every division. Is that what you guys want? We'll never know what, what's going on anymore, right? So sanction bodies too. But with these pound for pound lists, now it starts at number one for me, right? Number one is uh, Vasil Lomachenko. On my personal list, I still have him at number four, right? I've got Uzek at number five, but I have him at number four. Right. And, uh, you know, that, that's what I can give to him. The reason being is Terrence Crawford is number one for sure. And I have to have Vasil Lomachenko behind Mikey Garcia. It's almost impossible to look at both of these guys, what they've done in boxing next to each other and have Vasil Lomachenko in front of him and in front of everybody in the boxing world with 13 fights and a loss against Orlando Salido in his second fight. 13 losses uh, is what Salido had. Now, some would say, well, look at his, his, his uh, amateur career. He lost maybe one fight, 300 fights. Exactly. In his amateur career. So that would mean if, he, if we're going to say that he has such an amateur career, then his second fight is significant. Right? That means he lost in his second fight to Orlando Salido with 13 losses, not some undefeated guy who no one knew how to beat. Right? So that would, cap so that would pretty much say, well, you can't be the best in all of boxing. All these undefeated guys. Why do we keep doing that? It's, it's like it's urgency. And then his last fight, you know, not, not knocking it, but he got knocked down against Linares. Right? So if his amateur career is so great, then he was supposed to be great in the second fight as well. Especially if we say, hey, well, the first fight, he got a championship right away. Right? And then the next fight, oh, but then he's not, uh, you know, seasoned enough. No. He, he's got to be judged like that. Right? So... There you have it. Number one is a problem for me. Terrence Crawford is number one, hands down. Terrence Crawford was undisputed at 140, and that wasn't the way he started at. He started at 135, beat everybody there pretty much. Didn't get undisputed, but pretty much everybody knew who the baddest was, 135, but he goes up to 140 and beats everybody, becomes undisputed, right? Then he goes up to 147 and beat the guy, uh, well, a Titus, gets a title, the WBO style, and beat the guy who just beat Manny Pacquiao. This is the guy who we're putting behind Vasil Lomachenko. Stop it. Why are we so urgent to do that? It irks me. That's, it's, it's like something going on. You know, I'm not going to tell you. You guys know, I've told you on several occasions, American boxing is BTBG. Y'all figure out what I mean by that, right? But it's BTBG. You see it all the time. It's just ridiculous. Terrence Crawford should be number one. But okay, they got Vasil Lom uh, Lomachenko. So that's something that irks me, right? Shouldn't be number one. Now, 
Number three, they have Gennady Golovkin. <clears throat> now, that would be okay if you don't know much. You know, like, hey, you know, some of the casual fans, you know, who they make the pound pound list for anyway. But, you know, then there you can say GGG, he's knocked out most people and recently not. But, you know, hey, then let's show him some old highlights, nothing recent, right? Show him some old highlights back in the day when he was beating the Ishidas of the world and the Curtis Stevensons, and he looks awesome, right? You don't want to mention that he barely beat uh, Danny Jacobs, right? And you didn't want to readdress that fight to five, five or ten fights down the, down the road, which means never. Then we watch his behavior. Uh, he beats Canelo. Bottom line, he beat Canelo the first fight. Gets a draw, but he beat Canelo. But um, we'll get to Canelo later in the list. The thing is, right, on May the 5th, he didn't want to fight anyone. He doesn't want to fight anyone of substance in the middleweight division, right? Not any of those mandatories. At that point, you have to penalize him out of that pound for pound. We can't glorify that, or else he will not learn. Why are we not doing that? The boxing writers, casual fans, we can understand them. They see Golovkin, oh, cool, he he's, looks good. He's, you know, looks good. We, he beats people up, he knocks people out. And they say those things. They, that's it. They go, go to work and that's it. But people who are boxing writers, you know what happened on May 5th. We got to hold you accountable. You know that he was not trying to fight anybody. He's not even trying to unify. What's the, what is the deal? Six or seven down there so he can work harder again. Right? He's only 36. The man is the mo one of the best in, in the last 25 years. He should be doing better things. To be this high on the pound for pound list. To be a good fighter? No. But this high on the pound for pound list. Now, Ring Magazine, he's doing number one. But I already ranted about that. That's something that irks me. Right? Now, Canelo Alvarez is number nine. Right? And when it comes to Canelo, he should not be in there. Period. Pound for pound list means basically find a weight division. He was, didn't even wasn't at 154 much, was fighting at 155, wasn't the best 154 pounder, right? Hasn't fought anybody at 160 except Golovkin. And, you know, so you, you're not the best at 160, you weren't the best at 154. I'm repeating myself, but it's, it's the truth. And you're coming off a doping issue. Why are you in the top 10 at all, right? Is he better than one of the Charlo brothers? Heard. Anybody down there, that's, best fight, best win would be Laura. And he did not win that fight. That should have been a draw at least. Right? So it was, you know, and didn't get readdressed either. So, you know, open scoring with Austin Trout. Really? And those are the best wins because we don't want to say what happened against Mayweather. We don't want to go there. That irks people. You know, they want to act like that didn't happen. He gets dominated by the little man. Dominated. So, I mean, he's good in everything. No one is saying that. What we're saying is these, you know, these accolades Make them earn it. You know, if Canelo came out of one of 154 pound division, as man, Canelo, the baddest one there, right? How could that be when Charlo's are there, there and they're in Texas? They could have fought in Texas. What happened? Right? So we can't just anoint somebody. So that one hurt. Right? Then let's talk about AJ. Anthony Joshua, they got him in number 10. Doesn't matter, really, if Deontay Wilder was number nine. Doesn't matter. As long as he's behind Deontay Wilder, I wouldn't have no problem with what they want to put Anthony Joshua. But you need to be behind the guy that he doesn't want to fight. That all the boxing writers understand and know that he doesn't want to fight. So stop putting the man in front of that guy that he doesn't want to fight. That's also a champion in longer reigning. We could put the resumes next to each other. You could put the fact that he doesn't want to fight him. And then that would put Deontay Wilder in front of him. That would be justice. But these things are not happening. So it seems to me that the writers are just doing, writing what, who they can get, you know, who's making the most money and all those other things. All right. And so that's what can irk you. That's why I personally, I look at these lists and I laugh inside. It's like, okay, whatever. We see what you guys are up to. But I, the name, you know, Boxing Writers Association of America, all this information and you're still putting the same people in these places. Now, these things are updated every two months. Right? If they're updated every two months, how is Crawford not there? If they're updated every two months, how is AJ there? If they're updated every two months, why don't you put Canelo there? Why don't you just wait until somebody, the winner of Canelo and, and, and GGG? Then maybe put somebody in, in, at nine, but not too much higher. So if they're updated all the time, then don't we have a guy who just beat Terry Guy Kovalev, right? Who was three and Always in the top 10, perennial top 10 guy, Sergei Kovalev, the baddest light heavyweight, gets knocked out in round seven, 
that guy will not be in there. Why? If the other guy was there, why? And I will repeat, they were going to put uh, Jeff Horn number one pound for pound if he would have beat Terrence Crawford, who was smaller than him. But Terrence Crawford, they seemed to be reluctant. And if you don't believe that, go look at some more articles. I won't go back and find them, but I've read at least two that were planning on doing so. That's why I'm keeping, I'm keeping my eye on them. Where is he? Where is Guillermo Rigondeaux? For example, Guillermo Rigondeaux, the guy who no one wanted to fight at 118, 122, right? Ran, ran up to 126. Everybody knows this. He goes from 122 all the way up to 130, loses to Lomachenko, who they have number one pound for pound, which means that loss shouldn't really even count. Way up there. Didn't even ask Lomachenko to come down to 130 and uh, come down to 126 and meet him halfway, right? No. Make the man go way up there. He loses the fight. Now he's nowhere to be seen. You keep that man in the top 10 because the people around his size don't want anything to do with him. For that reason alone, for him being avoided like that, you empower him normally from how you feel inside, from the justice of it, everything. Unless money's not involved. So that's why these pound for pound lists to me seem blatantly, you know, blatantly done with, uh, with money as intention or something that, you know, that you're thinking. You know, somebody's paying somebody or something. There's no way that boxing writers, unbiased, can just come up and just ignore all of these people that are around. Why isn't Rigondeaux in there? Why isn't Elida Alvarez in there after beating him? Why is AJ in front of uh, your boy Deontay Wilder? Why is Lomachenko number one? If, why is anybody on the planet in front of Terrence Crawford? He's also undisputed. Only him and Alexander Uzek can say that in boxing. And I know people, are, you know, a casual fan is like, what the hell is that? That would mean, you know, a casual fan, just to you guys for right now. Wouldn't you like to have one champion in all the divisions? Just one, so you can really kind of figure out what's going on, you know, because people are telling you, hey, this is the champion. And they're like, well, he is too. And he is too. And they can point at about five people in one division who are the champions. Wouldn't you like one? Well, it's so hard to do in the boxing world that we have today because everybody's trying to make new sanctioned bodies so they can get money, right? And we're letting them. It's okay. If long as the boxers are getting some of that money, then it's okay. But when you have people that can find out or have found out they are the best in any weight position by themselves, undisputed, then they have to be represented highly, highly in these pound for pound lists because that will show the other guys that's what you need to do to get there. But if other guys are getting shortcuts and some aren't, then it's just not right. It's not justice. And y'all know that we address that. So that pound for pound list from the Writers Association of America, you know, a little bit better than Ring Magazines, but glaring uh, mistakes. And I wonder why are they making them? Y'all tell me what y'all think about that pound for pound list. I put it in the description box. Y'all let me know. Am I ranting? too much, or do y'all agree with something? And matter of fact, speaking of not agreeing, much props to the subscribers that never agree with me, but are there. Don't sports talk. Worldwide. And I'm about to y'all.